the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. Practical Psychology for Today. Featuring the works of Idris Shah, voiced by David Alt. Welcome to the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. In this edition of the podcast, we will hear selections from Reflections by Idris Shah. This audio has been made available by the Idris Shah Foundation. Once upon a time, not so very long ago, a certain building was infested by mice. The people in charge decided to kill them. One night, they put down mouse-killing poison. But the next morning, the poison had been eaten. We shall change the type of poison, the people said, and they made another attempt. But this second lethal dose, the mice also ate happily, and left signs that they were thriving on their new diet. It was decided to use old-fashioned, spring-operated mouse traps. These were baited with succulent cheese to tempt the poison-proof mice. But the mice refused to touch the cheese. One of the mouse catchers now had an inspiration. He thickly coated the cheese in the traps with poison. Perhaps the mice have developed a liking for poison. It may even be doing them good, he reasoned. The new plan was put into operation late one evening. The following morning, the spring traps were full of strong and healthy mice. From this story could be extracted all kinds of morals and teachings, but it is quoted here because it is absolutely true. Do you imagine that fables exist only to amuse or to instruct? and are based upon fiction. The best ones are delineations of what happens in real life, in the community, and in the individual's mental processes. The Ambitious Rats Once upon a time there were some rats. Nothing remarkable happened to them until they started to develop ambition. Their ambition took the form of wanting to be much, much bigger than they were at the time. Almost all their activities began to be directed towards this end. In the course of time, they started to breed as larger and larger rats. The first noteworthy event in their history was when men, realizing that these rats were large enough, began to hunt them for their skins. The second event was when other men realized that they could trap them and exhibit them as the biggest rats in the world. The third important event will, no doubt, be reported to you when it takes place. Dramatic A well-developed sense of the dramatic has values beyond what people usually imagine. One of these is to realize the limitations of a sense of the dramatic. The Highest Principles there was once a selfish and arrogant man. He had early learned, however, that he could conceal and yet indulge his harmful proclivities by calling them something else. He affected to preach and to practice perfection, and quite easily fell into a self-deceptive cast of mind. He found fault with others in the belief that he was trying to improve human behavior in general, and specific instances in particular. People became terrified of his criticisms, based as they manifestly were upon the highest principles of their own culture. None could fault his high morality. The society to which he belonged had no provision for cases when moralism became a disease. The only role which the community could provide for him was that of a guardian of the public ethic. His demand for nothing less than the best became such a habit with him that, one day, when he became ill, he refused to be treated by any doctor who did not possess the highest possible academic and clinical qualifications. Now he happened to be suffering from appendicitis, an ailment which can be dealt with by any ordinary practitioner. But, possessed by his own importance, irrevocably linked with his conception of the best man for the task, he started to travel from one town to another, seeking greater and greater surgical paragons. 
Each time he met a doctor, he feared that the man might not be good enough. Finally, as a successful operation became an immediate necessity to save his life, he found himself in a village where the only person with any knowledge of anatomy was the local butcher. He was a truly excellent butcher, but as a result of his manfully energetic, irreproachably dedicated efforts, our friend, the reputedly virtuous man for whom second best was no use at all, bled to death. Point of View Sadi of Shiraz, in his Bustan, stated an important truth when he told this miniature tale. A man met another, who was handsome, intelligent, and elegant. He asked him who he was. The other said, I am the devil. But you cannot be, said the first man, for the devil is evil and ugly. My friend, said Satan, you have been listening to my detractors. Different every time. A Sufi master was visited by a perplexed seeker after truth, who said to him, I have only one question to ask. Why is it, wherever I go, I always seem to get different pieces of advice from Sufis? The master answered, Come with me for a walk through this town, and we shall see what we can discover about this mystery. They went into the marketplace, and the Sufi asked a greengrocer, Tell me, what time of prayer is it? The greengrocer said, A time for the morning prayer. They continued their walk. After some time, the Sufi asked a tailor, What prayer time is it? The tailor answered, It, it is a time of the midday prayer. After spending more time in conversation and companionship with the seeker, the Sufi approached another man, this time a bookbinder. He asked him, What time of prayer is it? The man replied, Oh, it is now the time of the afternoon prayer. The Sufi turned to his companion and said, Do you want to continue the experiment, or are you now satisfied that virtually the same question can elicit almost totally different answers, all of them corresponding to the current truth? History History is not usually what has happened. History is what some people have thought to be significant. Affection and Regard It is possible to have great affection and regard for individuals and groups of people without in any way reducing one's awareness of their currently poor capacity for understanding and preserving their heritage. The present state of ignorance about distant and former cultures is not unique to this time. Unfortunately, though, the people of our time are not employing their superior resources to retrieve and develop the remnants of wider knowledge possessed elsewhere, and also at other times. This is because, while the tools and the general freedom are there for the first time, desire, resolution and breadth of vision are absent, also for the first time. The endowment is therefore at risk, for the first time. Forms of Love a man once decided that all perfection and beauty was in the tree. It gave fruit, shelter, materials for manufactures. It did this too without apparently making demands. It was there for good purposes. So he taught people that tree was good. Everyone eventually worshipped in forests and groves, and they loved trees. This preoccupation diverted most human attention for perhaps... 10,000 years. These people mistook the immediate for the real. So it is with man's present ideas about love. His most sublime ideas about love, if he but knew it, can be called the lowest of the possible perceptions of real love. What I say. If you are uninterested in what I say, there's an end to it. 
If you like what I say, please try to understand which previous influences have made you like it. If you like some of the things I say and dislike others, you could try to understand why. If you dislike all I say, why not try to find out what formed your attitude? The oyster. An oyster lying open on the ocean bed felt a loose pearl wash over it. The oyster closed its shell, and the pearl fell into a rock crevice. After tremendous effort, the oyster managed to retrieve the pearl and placed it on a leaf just beside it. This bribe may prevent the oyster catchers from taking me, it thought, for it knew something about men who sought for pearls. When a pearl diver, however, was ultimately in the vicinity, his eyes were alert for oyster shells, not pearls lying about loose. So he took the oyster, which, as it happened, did not contain a pearl, and the real pearl rolled away. It has not yet been rediscovered. Drowning. To drown in treacle is just as unpleasant as to drown in mud. People today are in danger of drowning in information, but because they have been taught that information is useful, they are more willing to drown than they need be. If they could handle information, they would not have to drown at all. The lightning and the oak. The lightning said to the oak tree, "Stand aside, or take what is coming to you." Causes. As important a fact as any individual cause on Earth is the virtual incapacity of the human individual to distinguish between a genuine cause and one which is foisted upon him by pressure, environment, propaganda, conditioning. If people had the sense they pretend to have, they would seek the means to make this fundamental distinction perceptible. Hardly anyone makes this effort. This is partly because it is an invisible but powerful part of their culture to teach that conditioned emotionality and causes, whose necessity, urgency, or rightness is only conditioned into them, are necessarily right. This is partly because it is an invisible but powerful part of their culture to teach that conditioned emotionality and causes, whose necessity, urgency, or rightness is only conditioned into them. Are necessarily right. Trust. None should say "I can trust" or "I cannot trust" until he is master of the option of trusting or not trusting. Indirect route. A man worked for many years seeking ways to become famous. Eventually, when he had amassed a great deal of money and was able to afford the services of a public relations specialist, he realized what he could have aimed for from the first. Changing sense of humor. It is encouraging that statements thought improbable enough to be quoted as humorous literary mistakes can, in under ten years. Be regarded as serious and even perceptive. This is an example of such a howler, from Cecil Hunt, The Best Howlers, London, nineteen forty-nine. Faith is that quality by which we believe what we should otherwise think was false. The older, the better. The intrusion of the doctrine of the older, the better. Is a characteristic of the irrationality which must break out somewhere in people who are trying too hard to be rational. Sign writers. Why are sign writers anonymous? In order to understand this, we have to go back into history. At one time, you see, sign writers were not anonymous. People used to respect and to applaud them. And also employed their signs and posters for information and directions. But after a time, the roles of the people, the signs, and the sign writers got out of balance. 
Why did you make that arrow so big? People started to ask. And this sign only expresses the personality of the artist. I'll not follow its content. And so on. Now, because people had become more interested in people than in things, without being able to deepen their knowledge of people, a decision had to be taken, whether the signs or the writers were more necessary or important. This is why sign writers are mostly anonymous. Now, they are getting better known again. This podcast is copyright 2016, the Idris Shah Foundation.